presentation. That was fantastic. Um, my name is Andrew Herring. I'm basically here to rapidly, rapidly tell you about rapid induction strategies in the emergency department. So our, our basic idea is we're basically trying to take the ideas we just heard about and kind of stuff them as far into the hospital as we can. And we're kind of starting with the ER. So with that, let's go. Uh, again, my name is Andrew Herring. I'm at Highland Hospital in Oakland. Um, where we have developed a whole set of strategies for beginning emergency department use of buprenorphine um, as people come into the ER. So, the how you use buprenorphine in the ER uh, has gone on for a lot of change. This was the first study of buprenorphine in the emergency setting. Does anyone say, see what this is? Right, this is heroin versus IV buprenorphine for a heart attack pain. So, there are other ideas about how we might use buprenorphine in the ER. Uh, most prominently, the study done by Gail D'Onofrio and her team at Yale, which really just was a game changer and basically drove home the simple message of if someone comes into the ER looking for help, why don't we give it to them? And so she did, and we had some really fantastic results. You know, it doubled the retention treatment at 30 days, but basically around 80%. So that really changed everything. The use of buprenorphine prior to her study had very, very little um, study in the ER. So this was the only study that was out there besides Gales, which was looking at using buprenorphine for treatment of acute withdrawal. And they actually used IV, which was available at that time. So we tried to take Gales' model and scale it up uh, to the size of the state, state of California, through a statewide project, the Edie Bridge Project. Uh, what we saw is that there's a lot of barriers to doing this. People don't, uh, how many ER docs are, practicing ER docs are in the, in the audience now? Exactly, right? So, the, uh, so the, what we had to do is change our model. Um, and basically, we have a really simple model um, where we partner with the California Poison Control, we're partnering with the hub and spoke and evolving system of care outside the ER, and then this idea of kind of a narrow focused treatment in the emergency department. So our goal is simply that I want every ER in the state to treat opioid withdrawal as an emergency. So you don't need to be an addiction specialist, be an emergency guy, you know, or a physician, be a physician who treats an acute symptom. They're in withdrawal, treat them, and the treatment is buprenorphine, right? It's a lot of properties about it that make it the ideal treatment. And then you want them to have access when they leave. So this is the idea, is that the ER doc doesn't need to be an addiction specialist, they know they should be treating with, with buprenorphine, it's in their predictions, they can access it. If they have questions, they pick up the phone and call poison control that tells them no, the DEA is not gonna kick down their door, right? They give the buprenorphine and then a single number or place to go after they're discharged. So if they're not in withdrawal, this is not an emergency. So all these issues of cost and access, et cetera. There they very reasonably can be be directed to somewhere in the community. However, if they are in withdrawal, we want to see them get treatment. So this is where the, the treatment basically is going to be treating their withdrawal using buprenorphine um, at a sufficient dose that they don't have withdrawal that's treated for two hours, four hours, six hours, and then a complicated set of home induction instructions and reliance on a pharmacy that probably will give them the medication because their insurance is lapsed or they don't have their ID or some of these other issues that all of us who do low threshold um, you have come into contact with. So we don't do screening, we don't do labs, we don't do, we don't do complex interviews. It's a bup first strategy, right? You treat with bup and then everything else comes after that. We observe them to make sure we've made a good clinical decision and then we give a second dose. And that second dose um, is really about extending the duration of action. Um, and we're able to do this because buprenorphine is remarkably safe. Right? We know that if there's going to be a trouble, you know, either precipitated withdrawal or sedation or something else like that, it's gonna happen quickly. We're gonna know within half an hour, 60 minutes, if we've got an issue. We know that the respiratory depression, the real thing that we're worried about, has been studied ad nauseum for decades and decades and decades. This is an incredibly safe drug where there is respiratory depression, but it plateaus out. Um, so it means that we can start using some higher doses safely. Um, there are some studies out there that really use astronomical doses. Think about this. This is a study using 16 milligrams of intravenous push buprenorphine. This achieves a plasma level which is just way higher than anything you'll ever be able to do with any amount 
of sublingual buprenorphine. And you see there is not a correlation um, with respiratory depression. Similarly, we don't see a correlation with sedation. You know, once you kind of get up into that four, eight milligram range, that's basically the amount of sedation you're gonna get. So increasing doses do not correlate to increasing feeling of sedation. Again, emphasizing the, the safety of more rapid induction approaches. What we do see, this is a study of one of my mentors, Andrew Saxon, at the University of Washington, is there is a significantly greater magnitude in the reduction in acute withdrawal symptoms. So the upper line is looking at folks who get eight milligrams, the bottom line is folks who get 24. These are all folks who had a history of heroin use presenting with a cause of 13 in withdrawal. We see that you get a much greater reduction in that withdrawal intensity. Um, but then persist for days. So this goes out, their study went out four days, and this is comparing 24 milligrams single dose to eight milligrams a day. So the, it was pretty clear you had better withdrawal control with the higher dose. So this is how we practice now at Highland. Um, the, when I wrote this, this uh, abstract, we had 68, we're up to 130 <coughs> patients now. Um, we've basically received anywhere from 24 to 32 milligrams in the emergency department. It all happens in the fast track area. There are chairs, it's unmonitored, there's no labs. We've had the only event we've had with one woman who had a migraine, not sure that was from. Um, we've had no patient cases of sedation. We had one woman who got really anxious, um, it was kind of a funny reaction that passed. No, no precipitated withdrawal, no other events. I follow up all of these patients, and so I'm able to talk to them after they come. Um, and the general perception that I'm getting is that people feel like it works, which I'm seeing in other programs using for smaller doses, is there's an increasing feeling that it doesn't work because they'll get four milligrams and maybe get another four milligrams later and they think, ah, it's not worth my time. So we're not seeing that at all. Learn more about our project. These are some websites um, and folks I really am proud to work with. And thank you for your time. Thank <laughs> you.